Hey everybody, it's Jordan with Let's Go Birding. Today we are going up to the mountains, to the Idaho Springs conifer area to visit our friend Cameron and to see some sweet mountain birds. Hopefully we'll get some rosy finches and fingers crossed we'll get Colorado's endemic, the brown capped rosy finch. All right, so it's a long drive, so let's get going. Uh oh, that was my accident right there. There it is. My accident. Hardly knew ya. Hardly knew ya. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the next exit? It's so far away. <laughs> it's three miles. Okay, here's the exit. We're gonna make it this time, everybody. Watch closely. Watch and learn. That one says, do not trust your GPS. Oof. Back there. I mean, it's too late. It's, it's too late, too late. it's our only way. I don't even look at the road anymore. I only look at the GPS. I just drive by GPS. So the boy who just missed his exit. <laughs> Ooh, Siskin. Oh. Get out of the way. Get out of the road, Siskin. Oh, not missing this turn. <laughs> oh. Oh, keep, keep going to the dot. Oh, okay. This camera's driving. We're hoping this is where we're supposed to go. There's also like no parking, so I'm just sort of gonna teeter over the edge just here. Like, oh, right up behind us. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. A uh, rosy finch on the feeder. I try to get him. Hello. What's up? Welcome to the cabin. Thank you. Oh uh, yeah. We're about to make breakfast burritos. If you guys want breakfast oh, burritos. Oh nice. That's what you know. He's up in the trees, but. He's <laughs> Somebody get some pizza. <laughs> what are we talking about? We put out some baguette for Justin. Oh, oh, here he's, he's coming in. Yay. Hello. Hey everybody, we're here at Cameron's house. He's got a ton of very cool mountain birds that we've been photographing this morning. And uh, we're gonna tour around this area and finally get something other than ducks for an episode, yeah. Cameron, what do you, what do, you do? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a wildlife biologist. I uh, work for a consulting firm. Uh, that's, I don't know. All right, all right, we got a short intro of him. Here, I'll give you some more details. Cameron's a prominent birder. He works with a consulting firm for energy development. He helps with site mitigation, so they go and they see what rarities are in that location first. It's like good for habitat protection. And he also has some like amazing equipment. He takes some amazing photos that we get to see in his house. We'll show you some of those. And yeah, he's just a really good birder, and he lives in a place where he gets really awesome birds. So right now we're looking at some rosy finches, some gray jays, Sorry, can of J's. And Get it right. Oh, it actually, these look like <laughs> yeah, these look like lodgepole pines. So we're between like nine and ten thousand feet, probably. This is my least favorite elevation. <laughs> it makes me a little sick. Great. But That's my <laughs> some great birds. My favorite elevation is actually just above this. Okay, so we didn't cover this yet. Um, but our target bird species were rosy finches and Canada Jay. And we've already seen both of them. This is different. This isn't a hot spot. This location is not a hot spot. We're just at Cameron's house. Um, but this area in Conifer, comma, Evergreen, larger area, Idaho Springs. Um, I mean, this area has these birds. We just happen to be at Cameron's house because it's comfortable and we want to hang out with Cameron today. There's the creeper <laughs> on the tree. The right side oh, yeah, of that there he tree. is. Oh. He's creeping. He's creeping. Is that another one on this tree, like two thirds of the way up? He was on the right side. There's a chickadee, which I have nicknamed Mountain Chickadee and Mocha Chinos. Because of the banding code, and one day I was just like, oh, look, a Mocha Chino. <laughs> I always call them Mochis. Oh, Mochi, I like it. Rosie Finch. Yay. Yay. Which one? Brown cap or gray? That's brown. Oh, is it? Gray, gray, that's gray. a gray. Gray crown, that one. We got a new rosy finch sitting out there, y'all. Yeah, this is a gray crown, non pepper subspecies. So, there's three different types of rosy finches, gray crowned, black, and brown capped. We're going to focus on the adult males. On gray crowned, if the gray on the crown goes below the eye, you have the heparin subspecies, and if it ends at the eye, you have the interior species. And then the brown capped rosy finch is all brown with the rosy on the wings and the flanks, just like the other two. And it has a brown crown, but some variants have gray on the crown. Black rosy finches, we didn't see any today, but they're completely black, except for their rosy wings and some of their flanks. And then they have a little bit of gray on the crown. So 
you're going to want to look for the gray in the crown, how much of it and where it is to distinguish between the three. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> they were trying to do like rosy finch banding and evergreen for a while. And I went up a few times with them, and every time it said it was going to snow, it didn't snow. It was hugely disappointing. Now CPW won't uh, allow people to band. Really? Yeah, because they're uh, worried that the leg bands are freezing the birds and losing feet. Huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We're well, not for the birds, but where's Junko? Oh, yeah. Oh, hi, Junko. Gray-headed. Does he have gray -headed. a little... Gray-headed. Oh, yeah. See, he's got a dark eye. This is like the highest well, I've ever all seen. Dark eyed Jinko sub sub groups. <laughs> okay, sub. Was it morph species? Uh, I think it's simply it says race, but we're trying to move away from that terminology. The stellar stay over here. He looks great. All right, who are we missing? Pine Grove speak, but I heard him on the driveway, so I'm just gonna. There's two uh, two mochas. <laughs> That's what we're calling them now. Yeah. That's what they are. M O C H. Oh man, I could just I could just spend the whole day just like sitting here. Yeah, there's there's like a, a, a good cycle of yeah, like almost like, like six or eight. Yeah, activity. different species all just like coming yeah. down. Well, right like... now it's like a little. Do mountain chickadees flock, or is this just like shared? Yeah, territory? they flock. Yeah, yeah. They go and they like to hang out with um, nut hatches and mixed flocks. Nut hatches and creepers will hang around and. I mean, the creepers are definitely like soloists, they're not like in the flock or anything. You never see like a flock of brown creepers. Here's my, oh, it's not the brown cap, but it is a rosy finch. Nicely glowing. He's like, what do I do? The squirrel is here. He looks so confused. Oh, who is this? Who makes that call? There's is a pine gross Oh, that's who I'm hearing. Yeah, right here up in the tree, Pine Grosby. Yep. The That's red? cool. Yep. Come in. Oh. oh my goodness. There's a brown capped rosy finch on the feeder. Yeah. Oh, Colorado's endemic. There's a Pine Grosby female. She has. Yeah, she flew yeah. over there. Yeah. I briefly got her. Nice. Oh, hello. He wants some bird seed also. Oh, white breasted. Oh. Two, one more to go. You can hear a brown headed. Do we see oh. a brown headed nut hatch? <laughs> There's some rarities you don't want to see because no one will believe you. Look at my rosy finch. Ah, oh, <laughs> You should submit that to all the other birds. One. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to, I submitted something to Awful Birds and they were like, he's too in focus and the frame is too good. Try again. <laughs> oh, very nice. This is a Clark's Snapcracker. Most birds, they get a peanut and they like take it and they're gone for like 20 minutes. They're like, whew, a whole peanut. Clark's Nutcracker, he's like, one more please. This is the closest I've ever seen a Clark's Nutcracker. Yeah. Usually I see them like flying in the distance or I like hear it fly over and then there's like trees obstructing my view. You gotta, we gotta band birds here. We're gonna do uh, color banding of the Nutcrackers. Oh nice. So that we can track longevity. Uh, but we should, uh, you guys should hop up to the uh, glacier. Oh yeah. It's only about a 20 minute walk. Cause I guess it's one of the, most accessible hiking yeah, in nice. the, the tundra from Denver. I feel myself just like immediately being out of breath. Ah, oh, yes, hiking at 10,000 feet. <sighs> yeah, did that like gentle slope just like kill you also? <laughs> it's like a lot. I ran up that to get my gloves. That was a mistake. <laughs> Is that built for that? It's a uh, Fisker's Urukai sword. Okay. Uh, Saruman produced many of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, perfect for whacking ice. Oh, good. Gotta keep it away from tires though, because it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even It'll go right flashes. through, clean through. Yeah. Cameron, we were we were talking about this is our first time birding on private property. What's like the principles for private property in general, and then for like your spot. 
So, I mean, we all have driven in like just creeps on somebody's Peters from the road. Totally, I, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little creepy, and it is a little creepy, because like when they were, my neighbor was just like, "Hey, there's some guys with big cameras standing <laughs> in my driveway." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." Because the only way to see my camera or my Peter is from his driveway. Uh, and uh, so after that, I posted on CFO. I was like, "Hey." Everyone is welcome here. Just message me. I feel like people who have like really prime feeder spots are like used to. They're like accustomed to birders being there, even if yeah. like their neighbors aren't at all. Yeah. And so, yeah, like anyone, anyone you're interested in looking at their birds with them, if you reach out, then they'll probably also be fine with it. Yeah. Even if we had somebody where they weren't even home and they're like, sure. Oh yeah. Stop my, by. My policy for this is if I'm not home, and the feeders are out, and the birds, like, you message me, walk on down, it doesn't matter. One of the nice things is that this is one of the premier trails in Front Range. The, it was like number three on the best winter hiking trail in Front Range. Is it the St. Mary's Trail? Yeah. Because it goes up and then it goes all throughout the oh, Alpine. Okay. So, like, you can go up to the Continental Divide, you can wow. go all over the place. The road that's over there by Loch Lomond, you can drive up at certain, certain times of the year. So you can drive up to see ptarmigans, and you don't have to go out. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's my kind of ptarmigan trip. Yeah. The place that you've moved into is more like the places that you were out during doing surveys. Yeah. Than like, you know, it's like you've taken your work home with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it's funny. It's like, you know, it's, of course, it's just coming constantly. Yeah. Like, like, so I'm watching those. So I've like racked up just hundreds of hours of Rosie Fitch's like observation time. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's, that's that one. <laughs> I know that Rosie Fitch. Good one to say. You're like, yes, I can tell. I've in the developed new subspecies of Rosie Fitch just from my observation. Well, so uh, the Sandia Crest House has been catching gray crowns that have like gray leaves on their cheek or their pepper. It's funny. So like it's the first time to see it. And earlier in the season, I had tons of great crowns. Most of them like had that sort of spottiness. Yeah. Control, but it's interesting to see that like it's a kind of weird year. And there's no black rose in this like hardly anywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you think I mean that could be like like because the rosy finch population isn't doing super hot and you have like a bit of bottlenecking. Could be interesting to see if you're hybridizing the two subspecies or yeah. Maybe it's a bolt or maybe it's a stress issue. Well, I almost had a rosy finch in the house today because I opened it up and they're all like outside my door. And I'm trying to take a picture of one on the snowbank. And there's one that's like right here, like at the <laughs> feet. I'm like, dude, you cannot come in here. <laughs> there's some sort of law against having rosy finches. Huh? Then if he's in your house, then you just start then feeding him some too. seed. <laughs> <laughs> He's very footy. Looks like a Stellar. Oh, yeah, that's a Stellar. Yeah, stellar. <laughs> Dark head, blue shadow. Yeah. <laughs> the blue phantom. Ooh. Blue shadow. That would be the blue phantom. Yeah. Instead of just like the camp robber. <laughs> Fur habitat. Yeah, this is this is my favorite mountain habitat. Really? Yeah, so yeah. There's some of that right above my house, which is where the free toad. Oh, yeah. And the boreal owl spots are. That makes sense. Yeah, this is subalpine fur habitat, which is my favorite because oh. it's like it's like a rainforest. And yeah, there's vaccinium you know. in the summer, and you can just go up in like July and eat all the blueberries. <laughs> there's your Those are crossbills. crossbills. Nope, that's not a crossbill. That's yeah. the lodgepole. That weird call. Lodgepole. Huh. Oh. It is. It's not the pew pew that I think of. Yeah. Hey, Jordan here from the future. Okay, so crossbill types are actually a really complicated topic involving both the species of the crossbills and the species of the trees that they inhabit. It's worth a whole other episode, so stay tuned for when we release that. But until then, back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Chickadees are all like, what? What? It's easily six chickadees here looking for an owl to beat up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cameron, you got to explain to our audience what you were doing. I was doing a really terrible uh, owl 
a kind of a pick me saw it all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was so neither. It was, really neither. Yeah. it was really neither. Uh, <laughs> First reported hybrid. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, just trying to piss off birds. Trying yeah. To entice them in. You got to buy. I mean, all the chickadees just sort of came out of came out of the woodwork there. Came out of the woodwork. <laughs> oh, but the other thing you were doing. Pishing. Oh, what was you like pishing? Oh. Also, just to imitate the aggression call of the aggravation. What is the actual name of that? The it's alarm. like an alarm call, basically. I think. Of, and it's, it's like, like a sparrows? rubber necker. Yeah, alarm it's, yeah. <laughs> You're like, rubber neckers aggregate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when a sparrow comes up and is like, oh shit, look at what's going on over there, y'all. Oh, damn. <laughs> Don't want to be that dude right now. He's getting eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode, everybody. Thank you again, Cameron, for loaning us your food, your smoothies, your house, and your knowledge of the trail. Oh, this is great. Finally, we got some good mountain birds. 10 out of 10. Oh, wow. Closest I've ever seen a cottage nut back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Closest I've ever seen a Canada thing. Yeah, that's true. Come back next week. We'll feed it out of our hands. Okay, wait, wait. I never say this, um, but like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends, and tell us where we should go next time. See you. Later. If a rosy finch was wearing a spacesuit, in its spacesuit it would be snowing, because that's like that's their comfortable survival the atmosphere. <laughs> oh look at him, right down there. He's like, I'll pull this off the floor, thank you. <laughs> I prefer floor bread. <laughs> <laughs>